Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode 11 of my Luminar 2018 tutorial series. And this one's all about some of the less common filters that you can use to edit and adjust your colors and your images. If you watch episode 10, I talked about a long list of 16 different filters that you could use to adjust colors. Uh, but I covered seven of those, and those seven were kind of the more common ones, uh, in my opinion. So that was the saturation of vibrance, the color temp, the golden hours, those kind of sort of the, uh, you know, the, the more popular, if you will, uh, filters for color enhancement. And I think those are the ones that people would naturally be drawn to because sort of mentally you read the name and it makes sense. Like golden hour, you think, okay, you know, color temperature, I get it. Saturation, vibrance, you know, really clear. But um, I also mentioned that there are a number that were kind of odd or weird or just different, uh, less common, I guess is a best, probably the best way to put it. And that's what I'm covering today. Um, even though they're less common, and maybe the uh, in each case, maybe the name doesn't immediately jump out at you and say, oh, I know what that does. Uh, they're very powerful and well worth knowing, and so that's what we're getting into today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to start with this one, which is Remove Color Cast. And I think the name there is pretty self-evident. It removes color cast from your photos. Uh, it automatically, uh, well, there's three methods. Um, it's Auto 1, Auto 2, and Manual. The first two, as the name implies, automatically detect and eliminate undesirable colors. So literally all you do on those is you just drag the slider uh, and that's it, right? So I've got it, I'll just go to 100 just to make it as obvious as possible. So here's the before and there's the after. If I'll look at the before again. If you can't tell, there's a little bit of a green hue here and it's been eliminated with Auto 1. So it's an improvement. I think it looks good. Auto 2, I'll just leave it on 100. Boom, much more golden tone. So in this um, one, it kind of went the other way, right? So it went from that to that. So it went kind of away from blue and more to golden. And so that's auto two. And then the third one is manual. And this one, you choose the amount and then you drag the color slider to, to basically pick the hue. So I'm going to go 100 again, just to uh, make it as obvious as I can. And I'll just drag this across. And, and I don't know if you'll see a whole lot of change. Um, I find that auto one and auto two do a pretty good job, really. Uh, but the truth is, I don't use this filter a whole lot. I don't have a lot of undesirable color casts. And when I do, they're generally pretty minor. And I tend to fix things in color temperature. But nonetheless, it's a powerful filter, well worth uh, using. And that's Remove Color Cast. So let's get on to filter number two. Okay, filter two is Hue Shift. And it's a very simple, uh, it's a one slider kind of deal. So you can just drag it left or right. Um, you know, it's going to uh, default here. So you can kind of if you go a little bit to the right, you can see it's getting a little bit off color. But if you go far to the right, it gets kind of crazy. That looks, you know, um, I don't know, just looks interesting. Um, and same thing, if you go to the left, you know, basically a little bit, it, it corrects a color cast, basically. So let me show you the before and the after. I don't know if you can even tell, it's very subtle. But if I go all the way over here, I get a very different looking result. And so the bottom line with this one is, um, you can you can make subtle changes to really help you with color cast or you can do dramatic things and come up with this You know sort of pink and green kind of look uh, for sort of creative or dramatic Output which can be really fun frankly, so that's really what hue, hue shift does very simple very straightforward very easy to use Let's jump into part three, which is cross processing Okay, so cross processing it basically simulates an old technique that was used in film um, editing or film uh, development years ago where you would deliberately take um, film and put it in a chemical solution that was designed for a different kind of film. And so people would do that and come up with interesting and weird sort of dramatic effects. And so as you can see here, there's two choices. You have the amount slider, right? Uh, and, and you have the drop down to choose the type. And the truth is, uh, for me, I generally, when I want to look at possibly different alternative or creative ideas, I just go through the drop down and see what works. For example, I know Seattle, uh, which is that one, does a pretty good job of bringing up that kind of color. So when I'm doing a sunset kind of photo, I'll apply Seattle sometimes and see how it looks, but I don't really want to go heavy, I, you know, way too much. You know, so, you know, 20 or 30, something like that. I know that Seattle's going to help me with the sunset. Don't use it every time, but that's an example. Um, all I do is I, I literally just click through and, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Um, unless you use it enough to memorize it because the look for each filter uh, or each type here, each name, which are named after different cities, obviously it, it doesn't change, right? It stays the same. It just varies based on the amount. I just can't really remember which is which. 
uh, and which one has certain specific colors in it, other than Seattle I know looks pretty good with a sunset. So I generally click through as I'm doing now and take a look, see what I want to do. And then, you know, that Auckland looks pretty decent here. Now that's the only filter. It needs some contrast and some other things, but you could use that to accentuate kind of a golden look. So again, it's all down to experimentation, but I actually love cross-processing. I use it on a number of photos and, and I used it in the previous version. Some of my other videos from last year uh, for Luminar 2017, I used it. And so fun filter worth checking out and that's cross-processing. And next up is photo filter. Okay, so photo filter basically just um, simulates or, uh, you know, uh, filters that are historically uh, applied to a lens. Generally, they're added to warm things up or to cool them off and, and sometimes just for dramatic effect. And so you just choose the amount. I'm just going to go way to the right. You choose the hue, right? So you can see as I scroll through, it's just following the, the same color line you get in a lot of the, um, you know, sort of uh, filters here. And in fact, I think, uh, where was I? I was about there. That looks pretty good. It's a little too blue, but you could take down the saturation. And I went to from before to after, just to create more of a blue kind of look. Uh, but you can just come along here, adjust the amount and the hue, and then of course the saturation itself. So I could bring that down and that actually looks pretty good, right? So there's the before and the after. Now I've wiped out a lot of the golden tones, but that's okay. If that's the look that I'm going for, then there it is. Uh, preserve luminosity. I usually just choose yes. You know, your options are yes or no. I choose yes because it basically will just maintain the exposure in the original shot. If I say no, things will change, right? I don't want that to change. That's not what I'm in the filter for. I'm just here to do some creative color toning and photo filter is a great way to do that. So um, this is something I would use maybe on sunset shots, but also like if I was trying to do some cool kind of creative urban looks, with maybe some grungy cityscape or something, that could be something fun to use, and that's photo filter. Okay, next up is color contrast. Okay, in this case, you just choose the color hue that you wanna apply contrast to. In this one, I wanna apply it to the sort of the golden tones, and then you choose the amount. And as you can see, it's dramatically impacting this photo. Let me show you a before and an after. Now again, I've, I've blown out some of the highlights here, but I'm, I'm just showing how it operates. And basically what it does is the highlighted hue is gonna get lighter, whereas the uh, hues or colors that are on the opposite side of the color wheel are gonna get darker. And so if you're not familiar with the color wheel, I recommend having one of these guys handy, right? So the opposite of the yellow is the blue. And so because I kind of chose a yellow hue here, uh, the, the yellows are getting lighter, see that, to that, and the blues are getting darker. Look at this sky up here, right? Here's the before and there's the after. So that's basically what it doing. it's doing. And so. Um, I can just move around, change the hue, and of course my photo is going to change significantly as I do that. But I think for this beach photo, I think that's the way to go. I use color contrast maybe 20% of the time, not a ton, but it's, it's fun to experiment with. And it's a great way to really bump up the colors or the look of your colors without adding saturation or doing vibrance or anything like that. Because you're creating contrast around these colors and it really does bump them up. Um, you can change brightness, that's gonna affect the entire image, and the same with contrast, right, across the entire image. So that's color contrast, powerful, fun, easy to use, just a couple of sliders, but I definitely recommend having a copy of a color wheel around, something like that. You can just find that on the, uh, on the internet. Keep that handy until you are really familiar with what the color wheel is and what the opposite or complementary colors are because that comes into play big time in using this filter. Okay, next is by color toning. Let me reset this and I'll be right there. Okay, so by color toning, basically, uh, as the name implies, it's two colors uh, and it applies toning to your image. You choose the colors, you choose how the split is between top and bottom. As you can see, you can choose top color and bottom color. All this does is it sort of simulates what people have done in the past with solid pieces of glass that you stick on a filter holder in front of your lens. A lot of people use these for landscapes and seascapes. You might have a, a blue sky and a, a warm beach, right, like this. Um, so you might wanna go blue in the top and warm in the bottom. So let's just do that as an example. So, so there are presets built in. You can just come in here and choose these and you haven't seen an effect on the photo yet because I haven't moved the amount. So you move amount slider and you come through and just hit some of these various bicolor toning filters and you can get some interesting and creative effects. Now you might say, Jim, that looks terrible, and it kind of does, but 
you know, you start reducing the saturation a little bit and that bicolor tone actually looks pretty decent here. So there's before and the after. I basically cooled off the sky and warmed up the beach like that, right? So much easier than doing layers and sticking filters in and brushing them into one part of the photo and then brushing something different into another part of the photo. Just come over here and you can just say, I just wanna warm up the sand and cool off the sky and boom, right? So depending on your photo, you know, some of these aren't gonna look very good, but uh, you can just come through and create whatever kind of look you want. So you can also click on the square next to top. This is the brightness value, right? So I'm gonna go a little bit brighter and I wanna go more blue, let's say, something like that. Uh, and then I wanna click over here to the bottom and let's say, uh, yes, yeah, so I wanna go even more bright and I wanna go a little bit more yellow. Uh, let's see, something more like that. And there, I've just created a custom sort of look and if I wanna sort of jack it up a little bit, I can move the saturation up or down. Now, not really probably the perfect look there, but you get the point. And here's a key thing, set orientation. It's automatically set to the middle. The photo's kind of there already, but like in other filters, like adjustable gradient, all that, you have this gradient zone that you can collapse, right? Doing this sort of thing. You can grab this center and move it up and down, and you can see how that affects the photo. Um, and you can also rotate and tilt if you need to. So I'm actually gonna leave the orientation right smack dab in the middle because I think it works. Uh, but that's how bicolor toning works. Super powerful, super easy. It's a great way to get some interesting and cool effects without having to go um, digging through uh, various filters and trying to apply them yourself. So I'm clicking through a couple more here just for fun. I think, uh, which one? Uh, I think that one looks really nice actually. Maybe a little high, right? So you could come in here and you could maybe do this and then maybe the gold is too gold. So you can come over here and fix it a little bit and say, well, let me take down the um, sort of the exposure, darken that a little bit and maybe reduce the color intensity. Um, and there you go. That looks pretty good. I mean, here's, you know, here's a before and after of that filter. There's before, there's the after. That's bicolor toning. It's really easy to use. It's all down to experimentation, but you can get some pretty amazing results pretty quick. So that's why I like the filter and I'm gonna hit reset and then we're gonna hop on to the last one. Okay, so channel mixer, it basically, um, as you know, uh, photos are made up of red, green, and blue values and each of these is called a channel. And it basically allows you to control uh, the red, green, or blue channels independently. And so, uh, let's see, we'll start on red here. Um, it'll have each one when you're on red, red's 100, everything else is zero, green, green's 100, blue, blue's 100, right? So I haven't done anything, that's just how it defaults. And basically, you remember the color wheel we talked about? So the opposite of red is cyan, right? You see that? And so um, if you wanna go more red, it's gonna go more red across the image. If you wanna go less on the red, it's gonna go more to the cyan. Um, and so that's basically how it works. Now, the green is not gonna do uh, green to magenta because I'm on the red tab. So it's gonna go the same as the red is gonna go. It's gonna go either more red, but in the green details, or more cyan in the green details, right? And same with blue. It's not gonna go blue to yellow like in the color wheel. Because I'm on the red tab, it's gonna go to the right, more red in the blue areas, or blue areas of detail. And if I go left, more cyan in the blue areas. The constant is like a global application of more red if you go to the right, and more cyan if you go to the left. So. That's how it works, right? Now, if you're on green, it's the same thing. If I go back to my color wheel, the opposite of green is magenta. So if I wanna go more green, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the green, uh, it goes more green across the photo. And of course it goes magenta in a big way. Uh, I'm gonna reset that to the defaults. Same with the red. Even though it's red color, it's not following the red and cyan uh, complementary colors. I'm on the green tab. So it's going green or magenta. So the red areas are gonna go either more green or more magenta. And same with blue and constant is the same as it was in the other tab. In this case, it's gonna go more green or more magenta, right? So I'm gonna reset that and same thing on blue. The opposite of blue, if you look on the color wheel, is yellow. So if I want more blue in the blue areas, I go to the right. It doesn't actually look so bad because there's already a lot of blue in the photo. Or if I want less, I go to left and it's gonna pick up more yellow, kind of the gold look in this photo. And same thing here. Even though it's red, it's gonna do, because I'm on the blue tab, it's gonna go blue to yellow. So more blue or more yellow, right? On the green, same thing. 
Uh, I'm gonna hit reset if I can. Green, more blue, more yellow because I'm on the green, excuse me, because I'm on the blue tab. Uh, and then constant, right? To the right, it's gonna be more blue globally across the image and to the left, more yellow constantly uh, or globally across the image. And that's really how Channel Mixer works. Now there's one other thing about Channel Mixer and that is it goes really well with black and white conversions. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the black and white filter. So now I've got a black and white image and I'm not gonna get into here and do all the stuff that you can do, but if you ever notice, you got red, green, and blue and that sort of thing here, right? So we're not gonna mess with those, but we are gonna mess with stuff here. So uh, because they're red, green, and blue, uh, details in black and white photos, you can see that by moving these around, I'm not creating a red photo, but I'm enhancing, you know, increasing or decreasing the visibility uh, and the uh, the amount of red in the uh, uh, in the black and white photo, right? So I've just made some adjustments there. Here's the before, which was a straight black and white conversion with that filter, and here's the after. So I'll do the same thing. I'll skip green. I'll just go to blue just for the heck of it. Same kind of thing. I'll just move these around. And basically, I'm you know, creating a different look to my black and white photos. And I'm just riffing. I have no plan whatsoever. I'm just pointing out that that's where I started with a black and white conversion, no other filters. And that's where I ended using the channel mixer to enhance my black and white. So what I would do is I would come in here with this. Uh, I would make my adjustments here. I'd do whatever sort of contrast or whatever. I'd probably add tone filter as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this because I'm not really doing this. Um, I'll do a separate video about black and whites, uh, but I would make those adjustments. I would add tone, and then I'd come in with channel mixer because it really does, there's the before, there's the after. It does make an impact on uh, black and whites because um, that's, uh, that's how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. You can see because of the stuff I was moving around here, on the black and white photo. When I removed the black and white and turned it back to color, it became very green, which is ugly. So I'm gonna kill that and go back to uh, the base unedited photo, but that's seven different filters that uh, help you in different ways, manage hues and uh, color contrast and different sort of looks or color looks. Um, and it, it, there's a lot of creative outlets here. You can do all kinds of things that are really unique and I think fun. So. These are the seven sort of uncommon, I don't know what to call them, the uncommon seven, how about that? The uncommon seven uh, for color adjustments. They're fun, they're powerful, they're actually really easy to use. Like everything else, it's seasoned to taste, and most importantly, just jack around with it. Stick them on a photo, move things around, get a feeling for it, and feel free to come back and watch the video in case it, uh, it's helpful. And if it is helpful, subscribe, like, share, comment, do all those things, and I appreciate you stopping by. I'll be back soon with another video. And that's it, my friends. Have a good one. Adios.